Praise you, Lord Jesus. Mary Jo, you ready? Thank you, Lord. That's the way you feel. But you know what? We should feel that way about God. That's what he wants us to feel for him. He wants us to feel that love where we can just lay upon his chest and get our peace. And right now, this year, I think that's what we all need. Amen. You know, uh, 2020 is a year that most of us would say we are ready for it to be over with, done with. But you know, in 2020, there also have been some good things to come out. We don't all know those good th notice those good things, but there has been some good things. You know, uh, people are attending church, they're listening to church on uh, their thing, on their phones or whatever, and some people have started seeking God because they realize without God, they're not going to make it through 2020. So you know, 20 uh, and this is a verse that I've been using all year. Most of you know it. John 10.10. 10. If 2020, I think John 10.10 10 is the answer to 2020. Mm -hmm. Because what the devil's tried to do, he's come tried to come in John 10.10. 10, the thief cometh not but for to steal and to kill and destroy. And that's what 2020's tried to do to a lot of us. <laughs> kill us, steal from us, and destroy us. I mean, it stole jobs. It stole our money. It stole people's health. It stole people's lives. But... We know something else. We know God. Amen. And God says, I am come that they might have life and they might have it more abundantly. In the New Living Translation, it says, the thief's purpose is to steal, kill, and destroy. So, okay, we know what Satan's purpose is. Yeah. His purpose is to destroy us. But guess what? He's under our feet. Amen. We know the one that's come to, with a purpose. Hit, God's purpose is to give the give us rich and satisfying lives. Amen. So when the devil's coming to attack, guess what? We can stomp our feet and say, "Get under my feet," because I'm gonna have a life better. My life's gonna be better. I'm gonna come out of this so strong, better than what I went into this life, this 2020. You know, we all thought 2020 was going to be, mm. ooh, a breeze. But guess what? Satan had another plan. But guess what? God's plan is bigger than Satan's plan. Amen. You know, Satan is little, but God is big. Sometimes we forget about that. Sometimes we think Satan is big and God's yeah. little. No, God's big, Satan's little. So, you know, you choose what you let your uh, comes into your life. We can't, there's some things we can't control. We can't control people. We can't control what they do to us. But what we can control is how we handle those things. Yes. So, you know, we just need to tell 2020, we got 2020 vision, and we know who's trying to destroy us. It ain't our Lord Jesus Christ, and it is the devil. The devil is the one that's trying to destroy us. He wants to blind us with all this stuff that's going on in the world. But, you know, there's a lot of great things going on in the world. And a lot of times we look at the bad things instead of the good things. So maybe we should not take our eyes off the bad things and start looking at the good things. So, you know, don't just get wrapped up in what you're seeing. Because, you know, what we see is temporal. But what we do with what we see is what changes our lives. Uh no, I hadn't arrived. Like I tell you all the time, when I'm teaching these things, these are things God is teaching to me. You know, then that song, it says, the more I seek you, the more I love you. Well, you know, um, I can't remember now how many years ago it was. It was probably three years ago. God told me to start getting up at 445 in the morning. I have to, I've been, I was getting up at 5. But he said, get up at 445 because I want you to sit down at 5 and be in my word. And listen, you there's plenty of books. You got your Bible. There's stuff on TV. If you have Roku, 
You can watch any preacher you want to on Roku. <laughs> Every one of them has a channel. <laughs> if you don't have Roku, get you a Roku. Because I'm telling you, you can listen to any preacher you want to, and you don't have to, do, he does, it doesn't have to fit in a perfect time cycle because you can turn them on any time you want. So, you know, there is no reason in this world that nobody should not be hearing the word. If you're not hearing the word, it's because you choose not to hear the word. If you're not getting in the word, it's because you choose not to get Amen. in the word. Because God has got it out there for us. Yes. We have to seek it. And so are you out there seeking God? Or are you out there seeking what makes you feel better? What makes you feel good? Make, because when, you're, when your flesh feels good, Satan sometimes, that means Satan is, he's waiting because he likes us to make our flesh feel good. But when you're kind of little, got a little uncomfortable, that means God's working on you and God wants you to turn from what you're doing. So, you know, just a reminder, John 10.10 10 is, is not the year. Just remember, John 10.10 10 is better than the year 2020. And remember who's come to steal your life. It isn't God. You know, the devil is in this world, and he is going to fight tooth and nail to destroy you. You just have to keep on looking, going forward. If you turn around or you look at what's happening behind you, you know, you're tempted to go back. But if you keep looking forward and say, hey, I, can, I know this is coming to an end. I know I can get through this. Keep traveling. Because, you know, there's a lot of people we know living in complete hell. But you know what? That's their choice. A lot of it is their choice. Life is full of choices. You can decide to either walk, go through or sit down. I choose not to sit down. I choose to go forward. You know, and like Joe said, that these organizations we're a member of, we're accountable to them. But Joe and I are accountable to each of you. Amen. Each of you are accountable to me and Joe. And that's one thing about church and loving people. We are a family. Yes. We're not out there by ourselves. You're not a long ranger. Anybody in this church you could call, and they would talk to you and help you with anything you need. You can call me and Joe. We'll help you when we, we, if we can. Anybody that can help you in this church is here to help you. You're not a long ranger. That's the reason we need church. Because if we got church, we got somebody to stand with us. When Amen. we need prayer, hey, uh, two does better than one. But a, a whole bunch? You imagine what we'll get through with a whole bunch of us praying. Amen. So, you know, realize you're not out there by yourself. And uh, me and Joe's not out there by ourselves. Because we have you, and you have us. And we love y'all. We love you. And we want, we want you to succeed in life. We want you to have success. And we want to have success. But, you know, let's just remember, we are a family. We are brothers and sisters in Christ. And we all have each other to answer to, and we all have each other to stand with us. You're not out there by yourself standing. So anytime you need help or you think something, call somebody in the church. They'll stand with you. Amen. We live in an evil day, don't we? How do you overcome evil? We're good. Go out and be good. Go outside these four walls and be good. Don't join in with everything else going. Be good. Overcome evil with good. Somebody do you evil? Just do good to them. Hardest thing in the world to do, but do it. <laughs> Didn't nobody say it was easy. But that's how we overcome. Glory to God. Let's pay over our tithes and offerings first this morning, and then we'll uh, get into the Word. Father, we just come to you in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Father, for the opportunity to put your Word to work in our lives. Father, we pray over our tithes and offerings now. We lift this money up before you, Father God. 
and we worship you with it. We thank you, Father God, for, that you, you bless it now in Jesus' name. We call it into the kingdom of God now. We separate it for the purpose of teaching and preaching your word and sharing your love with others, Father. And because of that, you can now take it and multiply it back to us, some 30, some 60, some 100-fold return. And we thank you for it, and we give you glory, honor, and praise for it in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Take your Bible if you got it this morning. Say, this is my Bible. This is God speaking to me now. I can do what it says I can do. I can have what it says I can have. I can be who it says I can be. From this day forward, I'll never be the same. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Hallelujah. If you believe that, God's Word will work mightily in you. It will do uh, big things in your life. It will cause victory to come in your life. But you've got to understand, this side of the grave, we have to enforce this. There's a low-down scandal running loose. His name is Lucifer, Satan. And he don't play fair. He'll come running in and attack you if you let him. You have authority over him, though, as a believer in Christ Jesus. But he's still going to try to push his will on you. Mary Jo just spoke of his will. To steal, kill, and destroy you. That's his, that's his only goal. Now, you think about that for a minute. Are you still here? He ain't got the authority to do it, does he? Unless you give him the authority. He's a defeated foe, folks. Satan whooped him. I mean, God whooped him. The devil whooped the devil in his own territory. Jesus whooped him. Down there in paradise. Made a show of him openly. I mean, they thought they had him. They had Jesus bound, took him to the very depths of hell. And put every kind of sickness and disease, every kind of sin, Jesus became that. God the Father had turned his back on him. And Satan pounced. Well, I got news for you. God has never turned his back on you, and you have the victory because of it. He does not turn his back on, on you and I, ever. He'll never leave us or forsake us, no matter what you've done in the past, no matter anything. So we have the victory. Amen. But you have to enforce this word right here on the devil. You have to enforce it. The curse is in the earth. It came when Adam and Eve blew it. The curse is here. Don't, don't believe it? Just go out and plant a garden and see what comes up in it. Weeds have come up in it just as sure as you didn't plant none of that stuff. But the curse is in the earth. The ground cries out for redemption, for, for salvation even. The Bible says, if you and I was to shut our mouths and never, ever speak of Jesus again, the rocks, the Bible says, would cry out for us. Think about that. Think of how powerful all this is. We're not left alone out here. Amen? We are, God has given us a means of living a victorious Christian life. But He don't do it for us. We have to do it. We have a part to play in it. And that part this morning I'm, we're going to look at is faith. Faith. He didn't just create Adam and Eve. Y'all know Adam and Eve, uh, when He created Adam and Eve, they didn't have a belly button. Think about that for a minute. They were created by God himself. They didn't have a belly button, did they? Couldn't have, right? I mean, I'm just guessing. I don't know. But there's no way they could have had a belly button. They wasn't born of a woman. They were created by God. 
God didn't just walk up to them and go, beep, and create a belly button and go, there now. You go out in the world and do the best you can. He didn't do that. He gave us something. Turn with me to 1 John chapter uh, 5, verse 4. <clears throat> For whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world, and this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. Say, I have, have. world-overcoming faith. You do. If you're born again, you have world overcoming faith. Amen? So obviously, y'all can see, we're going to look at faith this morning, how it works, kind of give a definition. Now, we can go on and on and on in teaching concerning faith, but I'm just going to kind of skim some things that's going to be very basic, very, you know, sometimes we just need to be reminded of these things. But you and I have this world overcoming faith. Amen. And we have the victory. Amen. We have the victory in life. So we want to keep our focus on how uh, Bible faith works. So what is faith? No, I'm not talking about your denomination. I'm not talking about you being a Baptist or a Presbyterian or a Methodist. I'm not talking about that. What is the Bible definition of, uh, of faith? Turn to Hebrews chapter 11. Hebrews 11, starting in verse 1. This is what faith is. When we talk about faith around here, this is what we're talking about. Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. For by it the elders obtained a good report. Through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God so that things which are seen are not made by things which do appear. The very ground you and I walk on, this very earth was created by faith. The God kind of faith. So it's going to be important for us to look at this God kind of faith and how it operates because that's the way we're supposed to operate. Okay? Now, if you will, if you want to take an assignment, Read Hebrews chapter 11, the whole chapter, today, this week, whatever. This is the, called the Heroes of Faith chapter. Listed in this chapter are all the heroes of faith and how they overcame. It talks, it talks about Abel. It talks about Enoch. It talks about uh, Noah. It talks about Abraham, it talks about Samson, it talks about all these heroes of faith and how they operated, how they overcame. And this is a whole list right here that God has put in the, in the Word of God. Then you can go back and study more stories about each one of them in, in the Bible. And all it's going to do is build up your faith. Amen? Amen. Amen. So, uh, the thing I wanted to point out in Hebrews 11, 1 there, now faith is the substance of things hoped for. Do y'all realize hope and faith go hand in hand? You got to have something you hope for. Now, we know Jesus is our blessed hope, right? Amen. And when there's going, because of that, there's coming a day and that you and I, when we depart from this earth, we're going to be with Jesus face to face, our blessed hope. And our faith is on that. It's out there on that. Amen. And there, that's the truth. But without hope, faith has nothing to give substance to. 
Nothing. <clears throat> without hope. There's a, there's a world out there today, y'all, without any hope whatsoever. No hope. They, they don't have no hope. Hope. Let's look at hope for just a minute. Hope is like a blueprint. Y'all know what a blueprint is. They say I was going to build a house. And uh, used to in the Birmingham News, they would post uh, the plans of a, home, a house and they would show the elevation, which is a picture of what the house looks like from the front side. And then they would post a, a brief description, a, a blueprint, if you would. And you could literally copy those things or you could purchase it through them. That's how I got my home. That's how I got the layout of my home. I saw it in the Birmingham newspaper. Cut it out, put it on my refrigerator. That was my hope. I could see it. That's my hope. And then I started mixing faith with that that I saw. And lo, lo and behold, guess what? It came, came about. I live in it today. With the help of my kids and everything else and Mary Jo, I just about was to give up on it until the boys were going to school every morning and confessing that this was their home. They had a picture of it. Well, see, that's what God's Word does for you and I. If you never get in the Word of God, you're never going to get any hope. This is the only place you can get the God kind of hope from. We already know just what Mary Jo said, what the devil is trying to do in the earth. And we see it every day. You turn on the news and it's there. You can't get away from it. Turn on the news. Get around friends and family now and you can't get away from it. That's all everybody's talking about. It's all the ugly that's going on in the world. It's, it's, it's here. It's there. Most of it's motivated by fear. Don't ever get in fear. Stay in faith. Don't ever let fear, fear is a spirit. And it can overtake you and cause you to not even function in life. Be scared to go outside your front door. The news media is, is pushing that, trying to keep you from going outside your front door every day. Don't listen to it. Amen. Don't do it. But hope is a blueprint. Faith is a uh, or the building materials of that blueprint. It it will build what it what it is you need. Amen. <clears throat> All you know, but we have to operate in faith. You have to operate in faith. Now every one of you this is just an example kinda every one of you operated in faith to a degree this morning and walking in this building. Every single one of you sat down on that pew. If you did not think that that pew would hold you up when you sat down, you never would have sat down in that pew. It's just a fact. That is a natural faith. You got faith that that thing will hold you up. Now that's a natural faith. When I talk about faith, I'm talking about the God kind of faith. Okay? Now, Bible faith. And there's only one place that you can get Bible faith. It's in the Bible. Faith, Romans 10, 17 says, faith comes by hearing and 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 hearing by the Word of God. Never ending. You've got to be hearing the Word of God. That's why it's important to come to church and hear it preached. That's why it's important for you to get up in the morning and confess it over your life. Speak it. You, you, do you realize you'll believe what you say quicker than you'll believe anybody else? So when you get up in the morning and say, No, bless God, by the stripes of Jesus I'm healed. You'll believe that quicker than you'll believe it if I tell you that you're healed, the healed of God. God knows that. And that's how this thing works. 
But we have to operate in it. We have to work it. It's not automatic. None of it's automatic. We have a role to play in all of this. A lot of people don't like hearing that nowadays. They speak, they speak of this extreme grace stuff that, you know, we don't, you don't have to do nothing no more. Yeah, you do. You need to be, number one, always quick to repent of sins in your life. Don't ever... You know, when you and I blow it, and we're all going to blow it, right? We've already proved that. We've blown it how many times? My Lord, have mercy. But whenever you blow it, don't ever get the wrong idea of running away from God and hiding and feeling bad about it. That's what the devil wants you to do. No, you run up to the throne room of God Go right on into that throne room where God sits. Jump up in his lap and say, Father, forgive me. I messed up. I mean, you got to make it right quick because if you don't and you let that keep going and festering in your life, you're giving an inroad to the devil in your life. And I've got news for you. If you open that door to the devil in your life, He's going to oblige you and He's going to come in and He's going to wreak hell in your life. Because we already found out He comes not but for to steal, kill, and destroy you. Okay? So we, we need to understand these things. This is the, so the, the basics of, uh, of the word of faith and basics of the Christian life. But we have to do these things. Amen. So we have hope, we have faith, which is the blueprint and the building materials. Amen. And then we've seen that, the example of, of faith that you did. Now that's just natural man faith sitting in that pew that you did. And so uh, God's words, yeah, let, me, let me give you an example here just for a second. If I say dog, what do you think of? You probably think of your little dog that you got. That's the, the, it painted a picture of something, didn't it? When I, you, when I say dog, you didn't see D-O-G, did you? You think of a dog, right? Now, I can think of my little dog that I had. All right? Now, I can change your whole aspect of that with words. In other words, my words that I say to you paint a picture. That's what God's Word is doing. It's painting a picture of who you really are, the authority that you have, where you stand in righteousness with Him, and how to walk in holiness. God's Word paints pictures. So if I say, big black dog, Every one of you now sees a Pacific big black dog. Words paint pictures. God's word paints pictures. Amen. And every time you read it, he is trying to paint a picture of what he sees in your life and what he wants you to have did y'all, there's thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of promises in this word to you. Promises of God. Now this word says that he's not a man that he should lie. So if I take his word literally and I believe it and I stand on it, that's faith. Faith is very simply taking God at his word and believing what he says he will do. If he says he will bless me, I just believe I'm blessed. If he says he'll heal me, I just believe I'm healed. If he says he'll save me, I just believe I'm saved. That's all faith is. And it's impossible to please God without faith. Amen. So, uh, but God's words paints pictures. 
just like a blueprint. That blueprint paints a picture of what it is that you want, right? Amen. And, and, and hope, that's hope. Hope of that new house. Hope of that new car. Hope of that whatever it is, you see. You've got to have that picture out there. If you can't see it with the eyes of faith, if you haven't painted the picture in your spirit, and you know, through faith, you're never going to obtain it. If you can't see it, you're not going to have it. If you don't see yourself married, you're never going to be married. If you don't see yourself uh, blessed, you're never going to be blessed. It's the way it works. Let God's Word paint that picture and then you can have it. Now we know by verse 3 that this is the way that God created there in Hebrews 11, 3. It says, <clears throat> Through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the Word of God so that things which are not made, things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. So let's look at this real quick. This is the very fundamentals of thing. Go to Genesis chapter 1. And we'll see how God operated in this. Right? Okay? See, faith gives substance to the things hoped for. Amen. We mix our faith with what He says and that we can have whatever we say. So let's see how God operated in it. Here in Genesis chapter 1, verse 1, In the beginning God created the heaven and earth, and the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. Okay, the earth was without form. It was void, and darkness was everywhere. You see it? God said, okay, and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. So this, this earth, this globe, spear here, was covered with water. And it says the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. He's hovering over the, the waters. And it's dark out there. There's no light anywhere. None. And God said, let there be light. And there was light. He spoke light into existence. Amen. And God saw that the light was good. And God divided the light from the darkness. And God called the light day and the darkness he called night. And the evening and the morning was the first day. And God said, let there be firmament. And then verse uh, 9, And God said, let the waters under the heaven be gathered together into one place and let the dry land appear. And then it goes, verse 11, uh, And God said, Let the earth bring forth grass and on and on. And God said, let, you know, on and on. God said, God said, God said, and what? It was. It was. <clears throat> so that's how faith operates. Now turn to Mark 11. And let's see something here. Well, let me see here. Um, Y'all can hold your place there in Mark 11. I'm going to do some, go somewhere here. Okay. We see in Genesis chapter 1 how God operates in His faith, the God kind of faith. All He did was say, and it was. Y'all see that, right? And then in Romans chapter 12, verse 3, For I say, through grace given unto me, to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly according as God hath dealt to every man the measure of faith. When you got born again, not now this doesn't I know it says every man, but when you got born again, God gave you the measure of the God kind of faith 
that he has that created the very universe and the heavens and this earth. He gave you his faith, a measure of it, the measure of it. Every man, woman, boy, and girl, when you get born again, you get the same measure of faith. Okay? Nobody gets a greater amount or anything else. There's no spec. We're all, God's not a respecter of persons. We're all equal in that area. You understand that. So, having no, uh, seeing that, let's now go to Mark eleven twenty two. And Jesus answering saith unto them, Have faith in God. The literal translation of this is, Have the God kind of faith. What is the God kind of faith? It's the kind of faith that speaks into the darkness and says, Light be! And light is. That's the God kind of faith. Do you see it? Now, no, I am not telling you that you and I are going to go around creating worlds and all this sort of stuff. But we could. If you developed your faith to that degree, you could. But this is, how, this is how it operates, okay? So, verse 23, For verily I say unto you that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, don't be thrown by the mountain part. Let's just look at it this way. Circumstance, situation that you're going through in life. That's the mountain, the difficulty that you face, whatever that mountain is. It may be financial mountain, of debt, poverty, okay? It may be physical sickness as a mountain that's in your way and you're having to deal with, okay? And it says, Be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe those things which he saith shall come to pass. He shall have whatsoever he saith. Just like God did. But you got to speak to that mountain. Don't you think that mountain is going to leave you without you speaking to it? Don't you think that Jesus is going to come down out of the thrones of heaven and come down and move that mountain for you? He's already given you the authority to move that mountain. And you and I have to operate in this, not Him. Amen. These are things we have to do. Therefore I say unto you, what things soever ye desire when ye pray, believe that ye receive them, and ye shall have them. And when ye stand, pray and forgive, if ye have aught against any, that your Father also which is in heaven may forgive you your trespasses. But if you do not forgive, neither will your Father which is in heaven forgive your trespasses. Very simply is, if you're going to operate in this God kind of faith, and have victory in your life, and, and overcome every area in your life, you've got to walk the love walk. When people do you wrong, don't you dare hold grudges or odd against somebody. You just say, Father, I forgive them in the name of Jesus, and you go on. Unforgiveness will stop you dead in your tracks in your faith walk, and your faith will not do you no good. You've got to walk in love. It's a must. It's a must. It says it right there. The love walk. It's a must. Amen. So, um, God's Word has to be in you too. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. In other words, it's got to be to the point, you know, sometimes I read stuff in the Word of God and I go, really? I heard it with my ears and see everything through my eye gate, everything that goes in your ear gate is deposited down here in your spirit. That's how it gets in you. And it's like a seed. So if I'm putting seed in my spirit of uh, God's Word, 
I have to continue to water that seed. And what has to happen, that word that you're going to stand on when you speak to that mountain, you got to know that you know that you know that you know that it's real and that God will do it. And there's another side of this it talks about right here. It says, and not doubt in his heart. Have you ever noticed when you're in a faith battle, let's say sickness, a virus, this, that, and the other, stomach virus or something. I, you know, I remember when I had my kids and they were little and stuff. It seemed like every time I turned around at the house, I was fighting stomach virus because, you know, for whatever reason, it gets on kids more than being in school and stuff like that. Have you ever noticed when you put your foot down and you speak to that virus, you be gone in the name of your stomach, you calm down in the name of you're speaking to that mountain? You ever notice the first thing that pops up in your mind is, you can't do that. It's like a, it's like a little devil jumps up here on your shoulder and says, don't you know you're already sick, dude? What are you talking about? You can't do that. And he's trying to make you doubt. But see, you can't stop that thought from coming. You can't stop that. If the devil jumps up there on your shoulder, you can't stop him putting that thought in your mind. That is not doubt. You can have doubt in your head, but not have doubt in your heart. And this is what it says right there. And it says, and not doubt in his heart. You and I will never be, we can't keep the birds from flying over our head. We can't do that. And in saying that, I'm saying you can't keep the devil from trying, or the, his cohorts or demonic spirits and this, that, and the other, trying to put thoughts into your head. You can't stop that. They're going to come. As long as we're on this side of the grave, you're going to have to deal with your thought life. Matter of fact, the battle is won right up here. The battlefield of the mind. The devil is doing his dead level best to get you to do something. And that is act on what he is saying instead of acting on what God has said. Okay? Okay. Matthew 6, 31. This is just basic stuff, but a lot of people have never learned this side of the basic stuff. Verse 30, now this is Jesus speaking. And he says, Therefore take no thought, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or whither, uh, wherewithal shall we be clothed? The key thing I want you to see here is take no thought, saying. You know how you take a thought? By saying it. Let's say, for example, I'm battling that little stomach virus. Okay? I've spoke to it. I'm standing on faith. I'm praising God. I'm thanking you, Lord Jesus. I got the victory over this thing. I'm not going to lay down and I'm not going to bow down to that porcelain goddess over there. I'm not going to do all that stuff in the name of Jesus. Stomach, you got to calm down. By the stripes of Jesus, I'm healed. Hallelujah, the law and the spirit of life of Christ Jesus has set me free from the law of sin and death. Amen. And then the devil jumped up there on my shoulder and says, but your stomach is really grumbling right now. <laughs> and then so I'm walking through the house and Mary Jo's over there in the kitchen cooking or something and I walk up to her and I, man, my stomach, I just took it. I just took it. I just took the devil's thought. I just spoke it. I got it. Now I got to start all over again if I'm going to stand against that in faith. Don't take that thought. Don't say that thought. That's what the devil's trying to get you to do is take his thought by saying it.
Because, see, there's only two forces in the earth, faith and fear. Faith comes from God, and it, it overcometh the world. It gives you the victory in life. Fear comes from the devil, and he's trying to kill, steal, and destroy you. And if he can get you to take his thoughts and to speak his thoughts and, and, and operate in that in your life, then that's exactly what you're going to get in life. Somebody said, well, you'll have to prove that to me in Scripture. Well, turn over to James. I wasn't planning on going this way this, this morning on, on all this, but this is the way the Lord has us going, so let's go here. James. Let's see. Y'all help me out. We put bits in the horse's mouth. Is it, I thought it was James chapter 1. 3. Yeah. Verse 2. For in many things we offend all. <clears throat> if a man offend not in word, the same is a perfect man and able to bridle his whole body. Behold, we put bits in the horse's mouths that they may obey us, and we turn about their whole body. Right? Y'all ever been on a horse? You can control that horse because of that bit. You put a little pressure on that bit, and he's going to turn it exactly the way you want to, him to turn. Well, watch this. Behold, also the ships, which though they are so great and are driven by fierce winds, yet are they turned about with a very small ham, whithersoever the governor listeth. If y'all have ever looked under those old sailboat type things, they've got a ham underneath there. And all they have to do is just start turning that paddle that's underneath there. It takes a little bit of time, but you can direct that entire ship to whatever direction you want it to go. Right? Even so, the tongue is a little member and boasteth great things. Behold, how great a matter a little fire kindleth, and the tongue is a fire, a world of iniquity. So is the tongue among our members that it divideth the whole body and setteth on fire the course of nature, and is set on fire of hell. For every kind of beast of, and of birds and serpents and of things of the sea is tamed and hath been tamed by mankind. You ever watch somebody that knows handle, how to handle wild horses and stuff? It's amazing. And they'll tame that wild horse. Well, the Bible says that we've tamed everything. Man can tame every kind of animal. But the tongue, no man can tame. It is unruly, evil, full of deadly poison. Wherewith bless we God, even the Father, and therewith curse we men, which are made after the similitude of God. Out of the same mouth proceeded blessing and cursing. My brethren, these things ought not be so. And it goes on and... Uh, talks about uh, blessing and cursing and, and this, that, and the other. <clears throat> now, it says that no man can tame the tongue. You and I cannot tame our tongue, but we can with the Holy Ghost. You can with the help of the Holy Ghost. You can overcome every area in your life. Now, your tongue is a rudder. If you don't like the direction your life is going today, Change what's coming out of your mouth. You and I are a product today of what we spoke yesterday. It's just, that's, it's just that way. It's what it's talking about. Our tongue is that powerful of a deal. The Bible even goes on, by our uh, words are we justified and by our words are we condemned. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, somebody drinking alcohol, this, that, that, that doesn't condemn them. Did y'all know that? 
And what comes out of this mouth condemns you. Mm. So we need to put a watch on our mouth. What we say. What we speak. Amen? Need to. So what you and I have been given the, the God kind of faith, the measure of the God kind of faith. But we have to develop it and grow it. Some people are at a different level than other people in their faith walk. Amen. And they obtain uh, different levels of prosperity, different levels of, of flowing in the Spirit and, 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 and overcoming in areas. But we have to put it to work. Amen. I'm going to tell you something else. Here in America, I don't know why it is so much prevalent in America, but every one of us here in this room this morning, you need to have a faith project going on. You know, when you live in such a blessed nation, you know what I mean? When you live in such a blessed nation, uh, the fact is that... Uh, we can obtain so much just because you lived on this by association of the fact you lived on the Why else do you think everybody wants to come to America, guys? It's blessed. God has blessed it. Amen. And, um, you know, I, I've said this recently. Our poverty level is greater than a lot of people's normal wealth, in, uh, in, especially in third world nations. Those in poverty in America have more than even the best in some nations and their standard of living. Now I understand if you got if you're po in poverty in the United States of America, you still got to pay your bills, you still got to buy your food, right? And the cost of living is a lot higher. So that poverty level is definitely that. It's poverty. And poverty is of the curse. You've been redeemed from the curse of the law. Jesus saw to it. His blood. He redeemed us from the curse of the law. Being made a curse for us, the Bible says. Amen. So it makes you think, we need to all rethink of what some of these things are. Uh have been taught, that we have been taught concerning prosperity, concerning sickness. Listen, if you and I think that God has put sickness on people, you'll never exercise your faith or has put sickness on you to teach you something or to, to bring you in line with somehow or something. If you believe that, you will never exercise your faith against that. And the devil's got you. He's got you right where you he wants you. Because he knows you can overcome him. But if your thinking is stinking, he's got you. He's got you. So the dividing line, what Mary Jo was talk, talking about, John 10.10, 10, the thief cometh not but for to steal, kill, and destroy. So everything on that side of that line that comes into your life to kill it, steal from it, destroy it, I don't care if it's trying to destroy your marriage. I don't care if he's trying to destroy your home itself through a storm or this, that, and the other. It all came from the devil. God is not bringing that about in your life to teach you something. It's the devil trying to kill you, destroy you, ruin your life. And then everything over here on this side of that line, dividing line of John 10.10, 10, Jesus said, I came to give you life and give it to you more abundantly. He says, I, I, don't, I think no bad thoughts or evil thoughts of you. I came to give you an expected end, a hope and an expected end. Jesus says, I want to bless you coming and going. I want you to be the head and not the tail, above only and not beneath. That's what Jesus says about us. Amen. And that's the dividing line. And the Bible also says all good gifts come down from the Father of lights, which is in heaven. So anything that has come into your life that is good, understand, that was God's doing. 
everything that comes into your life that is bad, that's the devil's doing. And you have been given authority over the devil. Amen. You've been given authority over the devil. Romans 4.17. We'll try to finish up with this. Romans 4, 17 says, For it is written, I have made the fa thee the father of many nations before him whom ye believed, even God, who quickeneth the dead and calleth those things which be not as though they were. Y'all see that? This is just an example of the God kind of faith he calls those things which be not as though they were. When he created the heavens and the earth, it was dark. Wasn't no light. You know, you know what you know what we as Christians do mostly? We call things that are as they are. And they don't, that's not what we're supposed to be doing. We're supposed to be imitating Jesus and God and how he operated. And he calls those things which be not as though they were. Amen. He, so if, if we call things that are, when you go home and say you've got a dog and the dog not there, and then if you're one of those kind of Christians that's going to call, call things as they are, don't dare go out on that back porch and say, Here, Buck, here, Buck, here, boy. Don't go calling for something that's not there. He's not there. You can't call it that way if you're one of those kind of Christians. But you and I know good and well that we'll even go out on our back steps and call for the dog. Here, Brando, here, boy, here, Brando, where you at? Come here, Brando. You ain't seen him. You don't see him anywhere. Here, Brando. Here, boy. What are you doing? You're calling the dog. Do you see the dog? Somebody could walk up to you. Well, I don't see no dog. What, are you, what in the heck is going on here, buddy? What are you doing? You see that? Jesus uh, proved this example time and time again. Y'all remember the, when he was walking with his disciples and the sycamine tree is in the way, in the path? And what did he do to that tree? He spoke to the tree. He called those things which be not as though they were. That tree was flourishing. It was alive. Spoke to it. Come back by a day later and the disciple says, Look, the tree you spoke to is withered up and died. Same thing with the fig tree. He, he saw a fig tree. and it, it, The fig tree was talking to him. Did y'all know that? Did y'all know trees talk? The fig tree was talking to him. It said, I got fruit. I got fruit. And then he happily went over there. He knew it wasn't time of fruit. He knows when fig trees are supposed to bear fruit. But the tree was speaking to him because of the bloom or whatever it was there. So he walked over there to get a fig and there was no fig on the fig tree and he cursed that tree. And it died. <laughs> he called those things which be not as though they were. And that's the kind of things that we have to do. And, and, and when you're speaking the things that be not as though they were, speak God's word over it. You got sickness in your life, you got something in your life, ailment or whatever, you speak to it. God is greater than that. And a greater force can always overtake a lower force. Amen? So if you're dealing with, you know, high blood pressure, get up in the morning, you speak to that high blood pressure, be gone in the name of Jesus. Confess God's word over that. By the stripes of Jesus, I'm healed. He bore this for me. I need not bear it. Amen. And receive what he's bought and paid for and speak to it that way. Uh, 
you need to establish it in, your, in the Word of God, what God's Word says about those things, and then speak to that mountain, and it will be removed if you don't doubt in your heart. It may take you some time to develop your faith to that degree. And, you know, the best thing to do really is develop your faith first, and then when you know you've got your faith level up some, then speak to that mountain, be thou removed. Amen. But have a faith project. Start doing something or nothing ever changes. We, for whatever reason, have just got to the point where we accept whatever the devil throws at us. I can handle this. God don't want you to handle that. That's what I'm saying. He wants to be so involved into every part of your life. He wants you walking in health. You know why he wants you walking in health today? So you'll have a testimony. We're living in the last days, folks. He needs you and I to, to share the truth of it. Well, I used to be bound by that, but God delivered me. I used to do this, and do, but God delivered me. He needs us in this day and hour. Amen. To be a witness, a bold witness for Him. To overcome evil with good. And talk about the good things of God to people. Well, I pray y'all receive that this morning. That's just one aspect of faith. Faith is so huge. You, you have to look at so many different avenues and different ways of how these things operate and work. And, uh, but greater is he that is in you than he that is in this world. The greater one lives in you. And you should say every morning, I'm born of God. And, and this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. I have world overcoming faith. Amen. And then don't let the devil or the world and everything else try to beat you down anymore. Put a stop to it. Say, whoa, devil. Uh-uh. You're not coming up in here with this. Amen. Everybody's head bowed and eyes closed. If you're here this morning you've never made Jesus the Lord of your life, I want to give you that opportunity to do so. The anointing has been really strong in here this morning. Amen. If you're here and maybe you've made the commitment to be uh, a Christian years ago, but uh, you've kind of fallen away from those things and you haven't been living for the Lord as you ought to have in the past and you want to come back under the protective umbrella of God and back into the household of God, I want to pray with you, whatever it may be. And if you're here and you've never... Uh, Receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in other tongues. The Bible says it's for you, your children, your children's children, and as the many as the Lord thy God shall call. And then also the Bible says to lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. We want to pray for you, whatever it may be, we want to pray with you this morning. You got anything, JT? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Anybody at all have any prayer request or anything at all this morning? Thank you, Jesus. Amen. And also, we have a prayer line now. Can you give the phone number? We're going to make some cards up or something and try to get some things out and promote that a little bit more. The, so at any time, if you just feel down, the devil been beating you or the world's been beating you, beating you and the news media just keeps pounding it on you, that's the way the devil operates. And you just need it to be lifted up. Call prayer line. Great opportunity for that to happen. Somebody, uh, Kathy will be there most of the time doing all that, of course, but... She'll be glad to get in the prayer of agreement with you or whatever you, you, it is that you may need. Amen. And, and, and pray for you. Let's close out now, Father.
Father, we just come to you in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Father. We, we pronounce the blessing of God over each and every one of these people here this morning in Jesus' mighty name. I thank you, Father God, that they're the head, not the tail. They're above only, but not beneath. I thank you that the favor of God goes before them in every area of their life. In Jesus' mighty name, opening doors unto them, Father God, that they find favor on their jobs, favor... Uh, in the grocery store, favor everywhere that they go, glory to God. We thank you for it. We give you glory, honor, praise for it. I thank you, Father God, that everybody here is healed from the top of their head to the soles of their feet. We rebuke any sickness in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Father God, that each and every one of us, uh, that no plague shall come nigh our dwelling. Hallelujah. We thank you for it. We give you glory, honor, and praise for it. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Thank <laughs> you.